What is going on everybody, welcome back to the Civilization 5 AI only Europe battle with the Health and Plagues mod. Quite a bit is going on at the moment, we are seeing the fall of Greece in front of us as Byzantium, Egypt and Russia race to take what is left. Obviously we saw Russia last video drop the first nuke on Athens, which was huge because no one else is anywhere, nu anywhere near having a nuke yet. And we're also seeing Sweden invade Denmark with a bit more success than they've been having previously. And other than that, the other big things, the Songhai, Garamantes and Arabia all have planes. I don't think anyone else does, if I'm right, but they all have an air force of sorts. I think the French are also looking pretty solid technologically as well at the moment in Western Europe. Whether Russia makes it over towards the French, I, I don't know, it could happen. And oh my goodness, wow, <laughs> didn't see that coming, but eventually the naval dominance paid off for the Garamantes. It was taking time, there's a lot of Swiss units there, but Geneva has fallen to the Garamantes. That is definitely going to fall back to Switzerland. As you can see, hundreds of Swiss units stood around it though. But that's probably going to cost Switzerland any chances of finishing anywhere good. I don't think they had many, but, you know, of finishing in that top ten. But destroyed, not, not dead. They will take it back, unless a miracle. It's the only problem with naval invasions, I guess. But yes, Russia obviously devastated Greece last video. They still have five more atomic bombs. They also made progress into Anatolia, taking Istanbul. And they're still pushing. Also, the Ottomans have an air force as well, which is impressive. But Russia have mobile SAMs, so whether that matters or not is another question. But yeah, we're looking. looks like Russia are going to push east and west through Anatolia. The race for Athens fell off a little bit there. Russia seemed to stop attacking for a turn wait a rush it i think they're still at war i hope they are because if not oh no they're not anymore okay the race for roads is on and then i expect they peaced out so russia and greece peacing out that means athens will probably fall to byzantium or egypt byzantium could get really lucky here they've already gained one city if they can get roads which i think they won't i think egypt will now well it depends this private because it's blocked off so i don't know how it works but Maybe one of them will. We'll find out in a second anyway. And yes, Athens should fall to one of them in the end. Yep, like I said, Switzerland always going to take Geneva back when they have so many melee units. Obviously, they can't hold these boats off. and They've lost a lot of population, but they're going to survive. Switzerland will be fine unless France declare war on them. And with all this artillery, France would be pretty devastating. The mountains would not be able to help the Swiss from that. And that is what the French need to do, really. I, I don't mean, you know, if the F French want to keep their dreams alive, they need to invade Switzerland. And that's a top five dream. They're probably going to be in the top ten. But, you know, if they want to be in the top five, they need to be eyeing up an invasion into Switzerland. It's Greece. Okay, let's just focus on what's going on in Greece. I'm pretty sure that is the only big major war going on. Yes, I think so. Arabia aren't doing anything. The Sumer have got a disease currently, it's not spread anywhere just yet, a plague, sorry. But um, a Sumer-Arabia war would be interesting, because the Sumer are just ahead in tech. Arabia only just got this great war infantry like a turn ago, so in the time we've been recording. So it'll be interesting to see what happens there. But yes, who's going to go first? So it's Denmark's turn. I think someone's already... no, Greece have already been. But why is Denmark taking so long? Okay, so we're down to 25 sieves, if you're interested in that as well, just so I'd let you know. There we go, so Byzantium captures the island of Rhodes, and they're moving on to try and take Athens already. See, I can't believe Russia nuked Athens, didn't even try to take it. Obviously, Russia now seems to be focusing on the Ottoman front, trying to push for the new Ottoman capital of Gyumri. Gyumri? Gyumri? I don't know, but Pentagon has been completed for Russia and look at Byzantium look at them they're starting to just you can see them on the map now you know obviously Constantinople is surrounded by yellow which puts them in a weak spot but down here they look pretty cool just stretching across the Mediterranean this makes it tough Egypt have now got to go round so I think again we should see and navally Egypt are just sending melee units across the sea so I think we should see Byzantium probably take Athens as well and just leave Greece stranded around the world on a few islands a lot of planes all of a sudden there's just a huge race arms race at the moment between 
the sieves that are just below, or just below, quite far below Russia, but, you know, those sort of big sieves that are behind Russia, so Songhai, seen lots of planes from them, 12 planes, 4, 8 from, 8, 10 from the Garamantes as well down here. Forget Greece in, ah, Greece in Africa, that, that's what we, I did, okay, so Egypt look like they're going to focus on fighting the two Greek cities in Africa, so goodbye. Looks like, I mean, it's going to be tough because Egypt was all coming around from the sea. If they'd have gone over the desert, it probably would have been easier. But who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? Any other cities being sieged out? Anything I am missing? Oh, yes. Okay, so Zurich is in the yellow. I don't know if Iceland are contributing to this. I, I presume they are because this boat, yeah, they are. Okay. <laughs> They're not doing very well. Austria has gone freedom. Has anyone? Are they the first? Are they, I think it's just them and Britain. Great Britain. Is that right? Am I right to say that? Okay, Zurich just got captured as I clicked, so it's frozen. Dang it. Uh, ideology. Freedom, Great Britain and Austria. Order, Ottomans, Garamantes. Everyone's in... Everyone is going through revolutionary waves, though. Because you need to be following autocracy like Russia. But there we go, Zurich. Bit more land up in Europe for the Swedish, who have come out on top. My pick to win of Denmark is now down to just Berlin. And Finland look like they may be eyeing something up. But that may be an attack on Sweden, which would be a very big war. Finland, Sweden. Look at Stockholm, by the way. 28 population. Would be a lovely city to have for whoever wants it. Um, so, what else is going on in the world? Britain is just starving Leeds down to a tiny city to keep Manchester their very their biggest city, which is actually an island, not in the UK nice and safe so that's what they're doing 21 population manchester i don't know why they like that city so much but they obviously do liverpool up here little port just producing some stuff <clears throat> spain and the moors just some units lining up the border from the spanish but don't think we'll see anything too soon from these guys so let's just go back to here to focus on the city of halicarnassus of greece in north africa and Athens, the Greek capital, Byzantium have landed quite a few units, cannons are going to be able to start firing, bringing the city defence down, I think in time, it, the job should be done once these Galeuses arrive, I mean they're a bit outdated, but they should be able to help get the job done yep, into the red, so probably one turn away with two cannons, three cannons even, there's a frigate, privateer if they want to send it round, or riflemen, whatever, they'll, they'll get it done this turn or next turn. There we go, we found the Prussian scout again. Hello. Just wandering around the map. Okay, so Egypt need to watch out over the Red Sea, because not only do Arabia have battleships, so they should be able to defend a crossing pretty well. There's no point in this navy. There really is no point in having this Arabia. You should have, like, if you had all of these boats worth of money, the f money being used to like, support these boats should be being put towards land units. You'd be a lot stronger. And an air force. Which you have quite a bit of one. Eight planes by the looks of things. They're moving so I can't really tell. Ah, there we go, yes. So the race for Berlin is on. Finland v Sweden. I presume this is the beginning of a Finnish-Swedish period of not liking each other. Where we could see a Finland-Sweden war at the height of it. Which would be pretty intense. Pretty intense. Finland's lead has dropped a bit, I feel, on Sweden. And obviously Finland having a big chunk of their land in the middle of nowhere. In the tun not really the tundra. The tundra is more up here. But in north, north of Russia. <laughs> we'll stick with north, north of Russia. Austria v. France. Why would you do that, Austria? Maybe someone else is planning to help out here. I don't know who would join Austria in this war. Ah, the Spanish would. It's not a very good idea, Spain. You're not going to have much success, but... <clears throat> you know, the Moors were trying this for ages with no success, so I don't think it will work. You need more than just Austria and Spain to take down the French, who are probably the strongest sieve in Western Europe. Um, the Moors v. France, again, that's not going to matter because they're in Iberia. The Garamantes have got more boats this time. So maybe they will finally get Geneva taken, but I don't know. That would be really tough. 
And there we go, Britain versus France. And a lot of units move into Glasgow, which will make the invasion a little bit easier. That makes things more interesting. So the Civs are definitely feeling the heat. They know, obviously in their minds, I presume Russia are getting kind of close to a domination victory. They're not particularly close. They didn't take this capital, so they've only got one, two... How many capitals do Russia have? One, Istanbul, Berlin's fell to Finland, interestingly. We'll look at that in a sec, but Russia have Istanbul, the former Goths capital, the former Lithuanian capital, and their own capital, not that many. So, they may have another one. I may be missing one, but, okay, lots is going on. Egypt took this Greek colony, and it looks like they may even keep going for Pergamon, which is a risk, because... Garamantes will probably be angry at that, and Russia is into the information era. Wow, they are very far ahead, but they have been for ages. And there we go, into Gumri go the Russians. They are now approaching Arabia, which will be an interesting border. Not much left of the Ottomans, four cut-off cities. Oh no, five if you include this one. So they're very spread out now. And it looks like we may see another attempt very soon from the Khazar to take Ankara. But yes, more importantly, up here, oh, Athens just fell to Byzantium. Lots of cities falling, the world is changing. But um, Berlin falls, Denmark, my pick to win the game, are out. Finland taking big chunks into Northern Europe. Finland, Sweden, I think we'll see something very soon with them once they've rebuilt. There's no way we can't, okay, there we go, new World Congress has now become the United Nations. So what's the vote? To choose a host, but ooh. So, I think someone, who looks very evil, wants Finland embargoed. Wait, why is the leader of Finland trying to embargo Finland? Oh, he's trying to repeal the embargo of Finland, and Sweden want to repeal the embargo of... Uh, not the embargo, the ban on silver trading. Or ban on silver, which lowers happiness. I don't think it's actually a ban on trading it. No, it's not. But um, Britain, but then you wouldn't need to trade it if it doesn't bring any happiness. But yes, Britain, I don't know whether they're going to have any success here. The French have got a lot of artillery, which will make crossing the channel difficult. I guess they'd need to take a hold in Glasgow first. And again, Redcoats not going to do too well against Great War Infantry of the French. But you never know, if Bavaria were to join in, or the Swiss, or the Garamantes are trying very hard here to take Geneva, so it is a period at the moment of great change, we saw three cities fall, if I'm right in counting in the last video, maybe four, because obviously Athens, yeah four, because we saw Gumri, Halicarnassus, Berlin, and Byzantium, all interesting, interesting stuff, it's not letting me click, hang on, oh, whoa, where are we going, <laughs> okay, Russia's pieced out with the Ottomans, did they take any more, well, there we go, this island, Gaziantep and Ankara going to Russia in the peace deal, leaving the Ottomans three cities, so they're still alive. They're a very small nation now out here, just in the northern part of the Arabian Peninsula. But look at Russia putting all their atomic bombs in the eastern Mediterranean next to Arabia within very close range. I mean, if they put them in Italy, southern Italy, they're in range of people like the Garamantes, almost anyone on the map, really. Then... Yep, the Celts following Russia with autocracy, but wow, this is incredibly incredible. But you never know, we had a surprise in the last campaign when it came to the winner, you just, you never know. But yes, Byzantium are doing well, Greece down to four spread out cities now, not many units left. But that's pretty good for Byzantium, taking Athens, they've been opportunistic, grabbed three cities. Problem is, they're now probably in Russia's firing line. I mean, I don't know what's next for Russia. Armenia, maybe. I mean, they could always backstab the Khazar, which would be huge. I mean, Khazar would lose, but a lot of units to grind through from the Khazar. But looks like a period of peace now. For the most part, we could still see Geneva switch hands, and it looks like it's going to be some very intense fighting up near Brussels, Glasgow. Obviously, I know this isn't Glasgow in real life, I know. I just, I didn't know how that's... What if France, France may actually take Glasgow back, which would be pretty, pretty good for the French. I mean, they'd then border the Swedish. 
France have struggled to expand. They've been trying to take Munich for a long time. It's not really worked. Britain is not having any success here. They needed to go for the Celts if they were going to try a war, and they haven't. So it's just going to let the Celts keep staying strong, keep growing. Maybe even open up an opportunity for a Celtic war. You know, Birmingham is very undefended. Even London is pretty undefended. If you can get your units quick enough to prevent this artillery getting back, back on shore, then you'd be in a very good spot. It looks like a little navy maybe sneaking around from the Celts. Who knows what we're going to see. Are Spain and the Moors going to contribute anything, or are they just going to watch Britain fall? Yep, it looks like they're just going to watch Britain fail. So that's good. Well, that's that's good. That's very sarcastic. It's good because it's not. I I don't want Spain. Well, I I don't mind. I I live in mainland Britain. It's fine. But um, yes. Okay. So it's going badly. The British did keep the city in the yellow and fight off some of the French. But this artillery is going to pound it straight down back to zero again for the Great War Infantry to move in. By the looks of things, these privateers trying to do something at Orleans, but the French very heavily armed coast here. And there we go, Geneva is back in the hands of the Garamantes. I think it will once again fall back to the Swiss. So I, I, I don't know, but the Great War Infantry may save it. But yes, if they don't take it back, we're seeing African sieves move in. We're seeing the outer Europe sieves push in. We're seeing from Scat, I know it's still technically, but into main sort of Western Europe, really. We're seeing Sweden and Finland push in from the north. We're seeing Russia from the east southeast now I guess um, now the Garamantes and there we go Glasgow fell and another city fell I think I don't know but Glasgow is French did I miss another city changing hands I don't think I did um, no it doesn't look like it okay that is that is good don't forget France have a city up here as do Britain we may see maybe one going the other way in a peace deal yeah, this has been impressive defence from the French. They've grabbed a city in a defensive war, so that's not going to have too many negative impacts for them. Denmark, what do you, Denmark, you don't even have a city. How can you declare war on Egypt? Austria are sending units. They're, they're thinking about it. They've got open borders, but I don't think they want to risk it. I mean, with Russia in the west, in the east, it may be a good idea to try and take a city over here so you've got a new home safely far away from the yellow blob but yes Napoleon yeah it is Napoleon who leads France I just just thought again thought I was wrong for a minute okay yes okay so Geneva's just switching hands constantly but the French have actually managed to make a crossing and also Britain captured Glasgow back using their navy I, they're very low on units now Britain but France have got a great war infantry and an artillery just sat in the middle of sort of Dorset area and that's just going to be able to stay out of range of other units, just cause some damage, wreak some havoc. And that may help the French take Glasgow back again. I think they should take hold of it eventually. But yes, this has been a big video. We saw almost Greece and the Ottomans finished off practically. There's not much left of them now. We're finally seeing Geneva, Sweden, Switzerland come under some pressure. France finally look like they're going somewhere. And we've seen Denmark fall from two pretty okay cities to nothing. But yeah, Finland and Switzerland must. I mean, unless they're like best buds. They're, they're sort of, they've either got to be best friends or they're going to hate each other. It's one or the other. No in-between between those two. But wow, look how much of Anatolia, Russia have. They've sort of divided it up with Byzantium, which is incredible. Atomic bombs, guided missile. Russia don't even have an air force. They just can't be bothered to build things they're just building atomic bombs guided missiles so that is that is pretty interesting but there's still there's still some there's still uh, I, I don't want to say anything um hmm three eight four I think I'm, I'm not sure when when this campaign is going to be coming to an end Normally I'd go to turn 450 because that's sort of the point where every where the top sieves, a few of them will hit the top tech bracket and then and then once you hit that obviously you just get disadvantaged as a top sieve because everyone's catching up to you no matter how big you are. So I'm not sure the Moors only just entered the modern era but um yeah I'm not sure 
whether we'll see one more episode and just go to turn 400 because I mean soon it's sort of there's not too much more that we can expect to happen we're just gonna see big people picking off little people I don't know I don't know I'll, I'll think about it I'll think about it I'll probably see where we are at the end of the next video see what happens and then from there decide whether whether anything happens Decide sort of what's what's gonna happen whether we're gonna just keep going or whatever I've got sort of a new plan for how the channel should work sort of upload things because I finally got daily down hitting it every day I'll probably miss a day now but I'm doing okay at the moment <clears throat> Glasgow falling to the French and we're approaching summer which is always a good good time only a few well, still four months away I guess so quite a while but still it, it's all good it's nice when the weather's nice there we go so Greece could finally lose a city uh, lose Pergamon I don't think Egypt will have any success going over the sea though why are you doing that Egypt have surprised me I mean especially when they lost this big city pretty early to the Arabians that limited their expansion obviously they can't go south because of Mercuria sort of forced round which they obviously didn't want to do I mean they're doing it now so they're not too bothered how are Spain and the Moors getting on down here how is this island how oh my goodness <laughs> jeez okay so the Songhai really wanted this land without a war that's a lot of citadels <laughs> oh my goodness that's why this city's at two population obviously while Mercia with the same amount of tiles I mean there is a coral reef here actually I shouldn't Wait, is that a coral reef yeah there is a coral reef <coughs> which is going to be providing quite a bit of food is there a coral reef in here yeah there's quite a few in here which helps Mecca these battleships would be really strong against somebody like Mercuria but that that is evil to think like that to think that they would attack Mercuria who have just been this small African tribe kind of people still provide I mean they've got Gatling guns Mercuria is sort of like the beginning of the sub-Saharan African nations you know how the ones in the north are a little bit more developed in real terms you know like Egypt uh, sort of Morocco in real life and then it gets to the Sahara and the development drops a bit sadly um, but yeah that that sort of that Mercury is the first sort of nation like that I feel <laughs> if obviously Africa extended in this map it obviously doesn't but this has been interesting so see the problem with the world you can't have this many sieves in Europe on a world map because one you'd have 40 sieves in the, you'd only have Wait, there is a 65 plus Civ mod, but I'll, I I don't think my PC would like that one too much. But, um, yeah, I mean, if you did all this on a world map, not only would you only have a few extra Civs elsewhere, but they're just the world maps are more... I know there's one with a larger Europe, but still, it's just so much harder being in Europe than anywhere else for the Civs. I mean, you've seen in this game the Civs that have done well. Russia, Khazar, Arabia, Garamanti, Songhai, probably the top five. If you throw Finland and France 6th, 7th, something like that, with Sweden around there as well. I mean, they're all from outside of Europe. I don't know why I'm showing you this, just sort of half screen, half grayness. Okay, so this is really, really inefficient, but the Garamantes have taken Geneva back again. The only thing this is really doing is burning through units from both sides. For Switzerland, if they lose too many, could see France try something once they get out of this British war. Austria is sending units across through Bavaria. Probably be too late. They needed to be they needed to attack at the same time as the British and get sort of that double invasion from two sides going on. That would have helped or maybe get Bavaria to help them as a sort of a meat shield, all these riflemen. I mean Austria have riflemen as well, so wouldn't have worked that way. It is nineteen sixty seven in game, so pretty interesting that people still have riflemen. They're very far behind. And then there's Russia who are very far ahead. All sorts of helicopters and they're moving units towards Novgorod, St. Petersburg. Who knows? The only thing out here is Finland to the north and uh, uh, Khazar to the south. So we never know. Also Khazar, paratroopers, pretty efficient unit themselves. 
like I said, this would be a very big battle. It would take time to take the Khazars out unless Russia obviously just went the cheap way of doing things and unloaded their nuclear arsenal. I mean, one nuke on a till, one on just north of Bursa so you don't hit your own units. Would probably be, and maybe one over here if you, they move their units back a bit. Just like that, boom, most of Khazars' units gone. Then they can just walk through and it'd be a capable walk. But let's just keep our eyes on that. So that could be what's going on. Most of this land is just empty of units. They've just got guided missiles out here. The Swiss do have a settler just making their way around somewhere. I don't know where they're going. But yes, that is going to be it for this video, guys. As always, if you've enjoyed, be sure to leave a like, comment, maybe sub 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 What was that? That was weird. Subscribe. There we go. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.